We can't see living dinosaurs on Earth anymore, but somewhere out in space, there may well be someone who can. When we look out into the universe, we're looking backwards in time. That's because light travels at a finite speed, and we see objects as they were when that light was emitted, not as they are at the moment we receive that light. There is no updating that light. Once it's left a planet or a star or whatever, the information it carries with it is locked in and it doesn't change. More than that, the further away something is, the further back in time we're looking. The thing is, light travels really, really fast. About 300,000 meters per second. This is incredibly quick, and means that light could travel all the way around the equator of the Earth in 0.13 seconds. This means that in everyday life, the delay is completely irrelevant. Technically, anything you look at, you see it as it was a fraction of a fraction of a second ago. This looking back in time effect is really only noticeable when we look into space. Even then, we need the massive distances of deep space objects for it to be impactful. For example, the moon is our closest astronomical neighbor. Even that is about 384,000 kilometers away, which is equivalent to 1.3 light seconds. This means that we see the moon as it was 1.3 seconds ago. The sun is about eight light minutes away. So we see sunlight eight whole minutes after it leaves the sun. You should never look directly at the sun with your eyes, by the way. It is very bad for you and your eyes, but if you look at it with safety glasses made especially for looking at the sun, you would see the sun as it was eight minutes ago. That means if the sun disappeared right now, we wouldn't know for eight whole minutes. How wild is that to think about? What's really cool is that this kind of works the other way around too. If there was life anywhere else in the galaxy or the universe, and they were able to look at the Earth and see our planet, they would not see us as we are now. They would see the planet as it was thousands or even millions of years ago. No aliens will know about our modern lives for a very long time. You and I are only in an alien's future. They can't see us now, if they exist. Of course, a natural question for me is then, well, how far away would an alien have to be to be looking at the Earth and see living, breathing dinosaurs roaming the surface? Surprisingly, if frustratingly, this is a pretty easy question to answer, at least on the surface. The last non-avian dinosaurs died when an asteroid several kilometers wide smashed into the Earth about 66 million years ago. This means that if there were some aliens 66 million light years away, or even further, and they were looking at the Earth with an incredible telescope, they would see dinosaurs dominating the planet. It does feel a little bit kind of circular and not that satisfying to just say they have to be 66 million light years away. So let's take a look at what that would really mean and how large these distances really are. Remember that a light year is a unit of distance, not time, despite how it sounds. It corresponds to the distance light would travel through space in an entire year, and it's a really long way. One light year is equivalent to 9.46 trillion kilometers, or 5.88 trillion miles, or an absurdly large distance. The fact we're then talking about millions of light years here gives you a sense of how big these distances really would have to be, and how far away you'd need to be to be looking at dinosaurs right now. So in order to get to these gargantuan distances, let's move from the Earth outwards. Select a few planets, stars, and galaxies on the way, and think about how they would be viewing the Earth if they hosted some life forms with telescopes looking at us right now. As we've already seen, the Moon is 1.3 light seconds away, so astronauts on the Moon could in theory see you at a delay of just over a second, and hypothetical fire-based life on the Sun would see you with an 8-minute delay. Pretty cool, but not anything mind-blowing just yet. Let's skip the other nearby planets because they're pretty close too. Neptune is the most distant planet in our solar system. It sits at a distance of around 4.5 billion kilometers, or a light travel time of 250 minutes, which is four and a bit hours. So Neptunians would see you having your breakfast while you're eating lunch on Earth. While Neptune is billions of kilometers away, we are hardly scratching the surface of looking back in time. Four hours is simply nothing when we're trying to get to millions of years. So let's head out of the solar system. The next nearest star to us, after the Sun, is called Proxima Centauri, and that is 4.16 light years away. Any Proximans, I think that's what I'm going to call them, would see us as we were four years ago. Now it is starting to get interesting. Think about how much you've changed in four years, but those Proximans see you as you were then. 
young, hopeful, and full of dreams, probably. That said, we're still a long way from seeing dinosaurs, so let's zoom out further. Here, we're centered on the sun, and I'm using a gorgeous map of nearby stars that I will link in the description. But let's pick out the most distant-looking named star here, which I think is our good friend Betelgeuse, or Betelgeuse if you prefer. This is a pretty famous star, and it's 642 and a half light years away. This means anyone living around Betelgeuse would see the Earth as it was in about the 1380s, when Richard II was king of England. The Hundred Year War was raging, and they had no idea it was going to last 100 years. And it's still about 400 years until America is formed. This is kind of cool, but it is becoming clear that we need to go a really long way to reach our goal. Here, we can see the entire Milky Way galaxy. The diameter of our home galaxy is about 100,000 light years. Anyone on the other side of the Milky Way would see us as we were 100,000 years ago. That's when the very first modern humans were emerging and moving out of Africa. Earth was different back then, but the dinosaurs had still been extinct for pretty much 66 million years. The Milky Way contains between 100 and 400 billion stars, and none of them can see dinosaurs. The next notable object on our tour is the closest galaxy to us, Andromeda. This galaxy is about 2.5 million light years away. Now we're getting somewhere. This is a time when modern humans didn't exist yet, but our ancestors Homo habilis had split off from the apes and chimpanzees, and they lived in very simple huts or teepees. The Earth was on the edge of an ice age, and large megafauna like woolly rhinoceroses, mammoths, and cave lions roamed the planet. To get to 66 million light years, we still need to go a lot further away. We have to zoom past many other galaxies, each containing billions of stars and planets that could in theory host alien astronomers looking at an ancient Earth. If we fly out to the magic number of 65 to 66 million light years, in one direction we arrive at a beautiful galaxy called NGC 3972. This is the galaxy imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope back in 2015. Like the Milky Way, it contains billions of stars and it's likely that the majority of those host multiple planets. So, theoretically, if there was intelligent telescope-building life on one of those planets, they could be seeing the Earth with the last dinosaurs still alive, including the world's scariest scavenger, the T-Rex. It's also kind of cool to think that we're seeing that galaxy and its stars as they were 66 million years ago, so they will have changed too. It's fun to think about what might be hiding in this image, and how it's evolved over the last 6 million decades. Now, even at this point, there are a few caveats that come with this bold claim. Firstly, in reality, it would be pretty much impossible to build a telescope big enough to resolve the Earth in enough detail to see dinosaurs from such a huge distance. Like, they'd realistically need to see the Earth with a resolution of about a meter or so to actually see animals on the surface, and to achieve that over these distances is effectively impossible. Even if you make some simplifying assumptions, you would still need a telescope dozens of light years wide to see anything close to this resolution. I'm sure that would certainly introduce some engineering problems that I can't even imagine. So really, this is not realistic even for very advanced civilizations. Still fun to think about though. Secondly, in my claim here that they could see dinosaurs, I'm also neglecting the motion of this galaxy caused by gravity and caused by dark energy pushing that galaxy away from us. By this, I mean that although this galaxy is 66 million light years away now, it wasn't actually always that far away from the Earth in the past. Space itself is expanding and it's carrying galaxies with it. And this changes the calculation a bit and makes it harder. That's why I'm neglecting it here. But it's something to keep in mind if you want to do this for yourself. It's slightly mind-bending to think about, but you need to calculate which stars, planets, and galaxies were 66 million light years away, 66 million years ago. You can then run the universe forward in time and see where that galaxy is now, and it will be a lot, lot further than 66 million light years. But that gets a bit more complicated, so I'm going to ignore that here. As well as all this, it's fun to remember that dinosaurs lived on the other side of the galaxy to us. The Earth, Sun, and our entire solar system aren't in the center of the galaxy, and they're not still. We actually live about 8 kiloparsecs from the center in a spiral arm called the Orion Arm. This means we orbit the galaxy slowly but surely at 828,000 kilometers an hour, and we complete one orbit every 230 million years. 
This means that, roughly speaking, the dinosaurs lived when the planet was on the other side of the galaxy to where we are now. I don't really think that impacts what we're talking about for imaging purposes, but it's fun to think about. Finally, even neglecting all of these caveats, this galaxy and any inhabitants wouldn't be able to see all of the dinosaurs. Many of the famous dinosaurs died long before the asteroid. There was an incredibly long period of time where dinosaurs dominated the Earth. For example, Stegosaurus lived between 150 and 155 million years ago in the late Jurassic period. To find a planet capable of seeing them, we have to go to somewhere like IC 1776 and hope for aliens living somewhere in there. Just as a fun aside, the time difference between living Stegosauruses and living T-Rex is about 80 million years, which is longer than the time difference between living T-Rex and us. The earliest time period with dinosaurs is called the Triassic period, which started about 250 million years ago. Incredibly distant galaxies like NGC 547 would be able to see the birth of dinosaurs such as the chicken-sized Dawn Raptor. Even beyond this, there are countless more distant galaxies that could theoretically see Earth pre-dinosaur, in an even earlier state of infancy with even earlier planets and massive insects. We know of so many galaxies that are more distant than any of these numbers, and it's fun to think about how they would see the Earth or even the dust we formed from before we were a planet. I hope you enjoyed this as a fun look at the universe and how distant aliens might be viewing our planet. Leave me any questions, comments, or complaints you have down below, and thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe, team. I'll see you soon. Bye!